So after you come back from that, like, are you like releasing your music also along the way, or are you like playing the internet game still, or was it like just a six-year-old poetry thing? So it was uh, on SoundCloud and YouTube. I would I would release music and and stuff like that, and then you know as I get older, my music better i delete my old stuff you know what i mean and although there's still some really old shitty shit on my account in fact i did keep progress i think that's kind of cool to see. right um still doing that i just uh never got on the uh streaming wave and in fact i only just now <laughs> um and stuff like that it's, i don't know there's just a part of me that's really hard to get me to want to go through all the legal jargon that is involved in that kind of shit um there's and so little legal of- jargon that's involved with that kind of shit i have released stuff with the lauren hill sample in it and uh, on spotify there's almost no legal jargon there is legal jargon if you want to register your shit with bmi or ASCAN, and that's where it gets there because when you're on a strict budget and you right, uh, are using beats that um, just on YouTube, just to, like, but then when you want to actually put it on Spotify and 17 and you have a job that's only paying you minimum wage part time, right? And all of this other shit, it's like, well, I can afford to pay 300 This is every time I want to pay, every time I put something on Spotify or whatever. So, there was a time before I was making more money and could afford it, right, to actually buy exclusives and stuff where it's like, there's no reason to put it on Spotify because I can either just get a lease and only stream it a thousand times, or I have to buy the $300 beat so I can stream it, or else there is legal jargon and it's basically just straight up illegal, right? It's mm-hmm. copyright. You can't just stream it. You're- so- I suppose you're all technically correct, but you would be shocked at the level of conversation that goes on behind closed doors between people on this subject that I've been exposed to. Like, my standards have slipped to, like, eh. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not, like, taking local producers' low-end shits and releasing it without consent because I really do care about consent. But, like, I'm also not like that worried about the 3000 streams thing that's like uh if you have that problem you're in a good position because you can always upgrade most of these leases and shit like it's usually just like you pay an extra 80 bucks and you get unlicensed so if you're in a position where something's taken off it's like yo hit the person up and be like yo here's some good news i feel you i guess it was just at that age i'm like oh well i didn't want to deal with it at all you know what i mean uh something I didn't feel like dealing with, didn't care about. And since you don't make a lot of money from streams unless you're doing really well and you know what you're doing, I just didn't understand the point of it till recently. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, now I do have a Spotify. Now I am in a position where I can purchase exclusives and I am. And now I feel a lot more comfortable and I see a lot more incentive to put my music on Spotify, all of that happening. You know what I mean? It just didn't make sense for me back a few years ago. I absolutely respect the fact that you care about the legalities of it all. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not trying to encourage people to break the law. I just meant like, I mean, in this day and age, it's like, it's not what it was. It is not well, what yeah, it was. Distro Kid artists- is hella liberal. Yeah, it, that's true. But uh, I mean, I don't know. In my experience, um, it's just such a it's a mixed bag honestly uh even when i was just like posting a rap uh there's been a couple times i remember trying to post a rap on youtube with a a beat you know not making profit not monetizing and i remember a couple times there'd be like a little copyright warning and it'd be like oh no you can't post this because some some producers are like very serious about that shit so i learned pretty early on if i want to be on a producer's good side i need to respect that and that's something i want I respect producers so much because not only do I make music and I could be a producer someday with my musical background, but like without them, I'm just acapella and no one wants to listen to that. And the beat is what keeps my passion for music uh, half the time because I, I just fucking grind into it and then I'm inspired to write to it. I feel you. And to be clear, everything on my Spotify, I've at least talked to the producer about it. So, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not really no, into totally, it. However, totally where I get gray zone and area is if the producer I use sampled some shit, I'm not worrying about clearances. That's where, like, I don't give a fuck on Spotify. 
I would not register that to SOCAN, which is Canada's BMI. But like, um, yeah, no, like I got a lot more liberal with samples and things like that because of the current climate. Because basically, if you violating, they block you. So you may as well take the risk. If it gets through, trust me, nobody's coming at anybody with anything, really. And if you do, you are having happy people problems 98% of the time. Like, it's really rare that somebody's getting fucked up on some shit. Like, oh, you used the sample. It's like you cease and desist. It gets taken down and it's over. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine most of the like, hey, nice job sampling that. You know what I mean? I assume it'd be flattering. I'm, I, I've had people literally not necessarily sample my shit but like remix my stuff and whatever and not tell me and then post and be like hey i remixed your stuff and i'm always like oh thank you like that that's flattering to me you know i'm not gonna be like oh my god take it down I just, all i ask is credit that you tell your fans that that you remixed my song or whatever that's it that's the important part that's to it. me is credit yeah. like i'm really into crediting uh the beat maker folk these days i think that's like why? Because I don't know who anybody was for the longest time. And it's honestly because everything was just a rapper's name. And then I realized how much, like, certain beat makers, like, they make the songs. Like, you know, look at, like, a Swiss Beats DMX combo. Like, it's not, it, like, it hits it hits nice when these two are together. You know, like, there's a lot of those throughout music. And, like, in the, in the, at the end of the day, it's, like, super important to care about the producer. So I respect everything you're saying. I just know, like... Yeah, it's kind of like hard to find and follow people for me if they're not on Spotify because I'm not really listening to music not on Spotify. So I could fuck with y'all and everything and it's like you're not there, you're not making my bicycle playlist because honestly, that's where the music gets played. 